We are talking real estate and rugby league and administration, and we're going to talk a lot of property. We're going to take our time with the great John Quayle. Under your reign, you're too humble to say so, but running the game with Ken Arthurson, who you mentioned, the game grew with record crowds, television ratings, sponsorships, expansions, participation levels, all up and build up reserves and funds as John continues the story. Gibbo, did you tell me that John once fined Jack? Did you tell me that? Well, John could probably tell the story better than I can, but I think that uh, there was a couple of rules brought in with coaches making certain comments, and I think Dad was supporting it. Um, but you tell the story, John, about that one where you had to find Dad. And- well, I, I certainly, as I said, I, I was fortunate to have that great relationship with the Gibson family, and, and all the way through, even though, you know, on so many occasions, we you talk about real estate, and your dad was so supportive of all of us trying to get real estate and get our houses. And you talk about the elite of South Sydney, the Ron Coots and the Bob McCarthy. They were all paying a fortune. So they were able to buy all those wonderful properties in Coogee. All our other, you know, people like us that were just battlers, we had to live around, you know, around Bondi and Maroubra, but we didn't mind. And it started us all off. But then, you know, you talk about Jack in those days, and yes, Jack rings me up one day because the headlines on all the papers in those days was referees. The whole game, referees. Coaches would win every time they lost. And Jack rings me up one day and says, you better do something about that. You should fine us. And I went to the league and the board and I said, I, I want to introduce a rule that any coach that comments after a game in relation to a referee and criticises will be fined. And the league were very reluctant to do it because they all knew their coaches would be getting fine. But anyhow, um, they allowed me to introduce a rule. And in those days, the first fine was $1,000. And so guess who the first person I had to fine was? Was He was the big article on Channel 9, big article in the paper and on Channel 9 of Jack criticising the referee. I ring him up and I said, I've got to fine you. He said, I didn't say anything critical of the game or the referees. I said, yes, you did. Anyhow, I fined him $1,000. He disputed it. I had to have an appeals committee. He went to the boardroom, and I'll never forget, he looked across at me and he said, tell me who put you up to this. (laughs) And I said, I had to stick solid and say, it's my decision, Mr. Gibson, and I was very official. Anyhow, the board stuck with me on it, and guess what? He didn't talk to me for 12 months. Wow. Never spoke a word to me after (laughs) that. Wow. Which was quite shattering. 